Today we'll try and attempt to sight in my new Savage Axis chambered in 308. Uh, I've equipped it with a rather inexpensive scope that I purchased at the gun show and uh, mounted it on the gun with a set of uh, mounts and uh, we'll see if we can't get this thing to get reasonably close uh, here in my backyard. Uh, we're going to be showing you some of the equipment that I'm going to use. I'm going to try and do this off the tailgate of the back of my pickup truck. And uh, we're going to use my lead sled platform to hold the gun in position while we're, we're shooting it. And uh, we also have uh, some of the other equipment out here that we'll be needing. We'll need the cartridges. I've got uh, my Federal 308 Winchester cartridges. It's uh, a 150 grain soft point. Uh, hopefully we won't need too many of those to get this thing sighted in. I've got my level that I've already used on part of my lead sled to try and get it reasonably level. And uh, we've got my spotting scope. Uh, to, that'll come in handy to save me a lot of leg work running out and checking my target to see where my rounds are hitting. Also, I'm going to be using a bore cider. It is a cartridge bore cider. It's a laser cider, uh, specifically chambered for the 308 round. And we will show you a little bit more about that up close here uh, in this same segment. All right, the uh, cartridge laser bore cider is uh, caliber specific. In other words, it's uh, it's a 308 simulated cartridge that you'll actually chamber into the uh, breech of the of the firearm. This being a 308 Savage, I use the 308 bore cider, and you can see that it takes three little bitty batteries stacked end on end inside the base that unscrews, and then once it's placed it, it, and it's screwed in and placed into the gun, it's on. And then it's supposed to give you a rough idea of where your sight picture will be from the chamber, and then you can use your scope. All right, I've loaded the three batteries into the, the bore cider itself, and as you can see, it, uh, is on and will stay on until I remove the batteries. So I'll go ahead and install this into the gun and get a rough idea of where I will be downrange. Okay, I have picked a spot downrange that I want to use for the moment. Really this is a little bit too bright in the afternoon but I can get a slight image of my laser downrange. Uh, it was pretty close to begin with, believe it or not, but by rotating my dial for windage and elevation, I can move the laser into my center dot on my scope. And then I can use the, the, the top adjustment is for, for range, and the side is for side knob, adjusting knob, is for windage or side to side. And I got this pretty close to where I want it. And at this point I probably should go ahead and set myself up a target and start with one or two rounds to see where I'm placing them on the target and then do most of my fine adjusting without this laser. The laser is just to get you within, you know, the ballpark area of, of center. First shot was here, so I'll we'll have to go back and make adjustment, but that's pretty good consider not laser sight. Uh, put me that close to being on. So we'll go back and make an adjustment and try another round. About how many feet? How many feet? That's only a few inches. Yeah. 
Second shot is, uh, could have been shooter error. I can't hold it that steady, but uh, I'm gonna go back and make sure my scope is tight. I should have had it in closer to zero than what I'm getting right here, but uh, we'll go back and try it again. Shot number three. I overcompensated. I was just taking a wild, crazy guess on how many uh, clicks on my adjustment I should make. And I went way, way over. Uh, I don't think I was off that much on my shot, but I'm going to go back and, and try and make readjustment and bring it back in for center. All right, this is shot number four. We're shooting at approximately 85 yards. All right, this was shot number four. It looks like I've got my range right on. But now I've got to get my windage. I'm going to bring it back in about the same number of clicks. I moved it eight clicks. I'm going to move it another eight to ten to see if I can get it on center. And we will try that now. All right, shot number five. We're going to try this if I can get this thing on target. Here we go. Shot number five. My placement still shows that I'm on range, but I still need to move for my windage. More clicks to the right. I'm going to move it about 10 about 10 clicks right. Okay, shot number six. Shot number six, probably shooter error, but I'm gonna try back at it off a few clicks and Try it one more time. <coughs> Number seven. Shot number seven close to center. We'll leave it right there and try two shots to see if it's how much <laughs> in error I am. Shot number eight. Leave it running. Number nine. That's shot seven, eight, and nine. Last two were eight and nine. The two higher ones were eight and nine. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna move it a click left and shoot one more round and see how it does. All right, this would be round number 10.
I think I pulled that one. Shots 11 and 12 uh, were just a little bit high, uh, but on the bullseye, close enough for my shooting, uh, they were like at 11 and 12 o'clock on the bullseye, on the red dot, so I'm going to leave it there for the time being until I can get out in uh, some better conditions, but I feel satisfied that will be adequate uh, for now.